I grew up in Iowa. If you haven't ever been there, a lot of corn grows there. Like, a lot of corn. And it makes sense why everyone in high school either drank, used drugs, or made crop circles on the weekends. Now, I don't live anywhere near that place anymore. And it's just not because of all the corn and boredom, but because something lives in those fields. Migrating between the fields without ever being noticed. Except by me and a few of my friends on a foggy October night. We had gone out for the typical reason. One of my friends had found a way to get a case of beer, and we were going to finish them off. Most weekend nights, there was usually a party somewhere, but tonight, we couldn't find anything. So, we drove for a while, drinking in the back of my buddy's truck and throwing the cans out. The night didn't start out foggy, but when it rolled in, it rolled in thick. The truck moved a little slower, but we had finally come to a little road which led up past several more cornfields and to a slightly wooded area with an old, broken-down barn. We left the truck on the side of the road and crawled into the barn. It was cold, so our dumb, drunk minds thought it would be a good idea to start a little fire. And since we'd been there several times doing the exact same thing, we already had seats made of makeshift parts. And a cut in half old oil drum which we'd make a fire in before. And after breaking up a few pieces of the barn's old rotting wood and placed it into the oil drum, we lit it on fire. The heat of the fire filled the room. Or the beer warmed me up quickly. I'm not exactly sure which one it was, but anyway. We joked and played little games then made discussion about the different ways we planned on getting the hell out of that little farm town once high school was over. Now, One of my friends stopped our conversation and claimed that he heard a tapping on the outside of the barn, but after waiting a minute to no results, we returned to our drunk-fueled discussions. The second time, we all heard it. A solid pounding on the outside of the old barn. My heart sank, as I'm sure my friend's hearts did as well, as I thought we'd been found, and well, we'd all get in trouble for trespassing, and of course, we were all underage with a box of beers. None of us moved. We just waited for someone to enter, but no one did. Just another pounding on the side of the barn. I and another one of my buddies stood and walked to the entrance, and we peeked out. But the fog and the darkness had made it hard to even see the corner of the barn, and I used my phone's light to look around us. Even with the light, it was hard to see far into the fog, so we went to check it out. We both grew at ease when we realized that the sound was coming from a tree branch blowing in the wind and scratching at the side of the barn. And while we were headed back into the barn, I thought I saw a movement in the fog, so I went to check it out. I looked through the corn for a while, seeing if there was anyone walking around. I even got the idea to start whistling at one point, and that way if there were a dog, it would respond in some way. I noticed the corn stalks rustling around me, but it was only because of the wind. And when I returned to the barn, it seemed like the fog moved around the entrance as if someone had walked through it. But, again, I chalked that up to the wind blowing the fog around. My worried friends were relieved that there was no one outside and the small party went on. Now maybe, I was just incredibly drunk. But, I heard another noise which sounded more like something howling with the wind not the howling of the wind. Oh, it's probably just the wind blowing through a different part of the barn, one of my friends told me when I finally brought it up to them. And I told them that I was going to check outside again, and they paid no attention to it. And at first, it seemed as if the fog moved as if someone had just stood in the doorway. And when I turned the corner, 
I found that the branch which had been scratching the side of the barn had been broken and torn off. I assumed it was one of my friends, and I returned to find out that a few of my friends had fallen asleep while the other two laid back smoking a joint. The entire barn reeked, and I went and sat next to them, but I didn't smoke. I only watched outside. A bad feeling was pulling out my consciousness, which I couldn't place. At that point, I wanted nothing more than to leave, but I didn't voice it to the others, only continued to have conversations with the ones still awake which dwindled quickly. A shadowy figure walked past the window, and I tried to point it out to the others, but by that point, I was the only one still awake. Now the nearest person to me got angry when I woke them, and nothing stood in the window to prove my claims. They told me that I was probably just really drunk, and I accepted the claim as I started to fall asleep as well, after setting a really early alarm on my phone. Now it wasn't my phone that woke me, but the sound of something scuffling around our stuff. At first, I assumed it was an animal. My head was spinning, and I couldn't see very straight. And through my blurred vision and the fog which was entering the old barn, it appeared to be a naked person, maybe a tweaker rummaging through our stuff. And in my drunken stupor, I managed to gurgle up some form of a shout at it, and it ran for the open barn door after hunching down to all four. It grunted back at me before leaving, as if it were trying to say something to me, but it was gone before it finished its odd noise. When I stood and ran to the door, I peered out to meet that blanket of fog that I was so used to seeing. My friends began to wake, and I told them what I saw. We looked over to our stuff to find that none of our stuff was missing, it appeared that the footprints might be humanoid or something in the ape family, and it was apparent that whatever it was, it had long claws, because there were scratch marks in the dirt along with the prints. Creeped out by the interaction I just experienced, I urged everybody that we go home. And so we gathered our things and made our way back to the truck. But when we reached the road, we found no truck. We checked all directions of the road to make sure we hadn't parked it somewhere else, but it was indeed missing. And that's when my friend who owned that truck realized that his keys were gone. That's what the thing had been searching for. One of my friends pointed out the imprints caused from the tires, and we followed them to a point where the trail led into the cornfields. We followed the trail of broken corn. The amount of damage done to the fields was immense. We felt bad for the farmers the farther we followed the trail into the forest of corn. We eventually walked upon the truck just in the middle of a field. When we searched it, we found nothing wrong with the truck or anything missing from it other than the gas necessary for it to get there. One of my friends walked off to go to the bathroom. and We heard him scream. Calling to him proved to be pointless, and when we looked around for him, we couldn't find him. Panic struck in, and we stood on top of the truck searching for any sign of him and calling out for him. And I noticed something move the corn around near the truck, and I told my other friend to go check it out. He ran back shortly after and told all of us to get in the truck. He locked the doors once we were all inside, and watched out the window. And all of a sudden, a loud bang came from the side of the truck, and it sounded like something went underneath the vehicle and began to scratch at the bottom of it, as if it were trying to dig into it. My buddy tried to start the car a few times, but it refused to start, and the scratching continued, and we tried the truck one more time. Sparks flew out from under the hood, and a fire erupted on the ground. Whatever had been scratching at the truck, had scratched open a fuel line and gasoline had poured all over the ground. My friends and I lunged from the truck and all immediately stood and looked to see the cause of the scratching. But it was gone. 
and the fire grew quickly, consuming the truck. When we regrouped, another one of us was missing. As we took off running from the truck and the growing fire, something lunged at us, knocking us down. I felt several nails digging into my skin, but I couldn't get a good look at it as it thrashed me about. It ran off into the corn, leaving my friends and I bloodied. Once we were standing and we had our wits about us, we ran back to the road. And I saw for the last time, in between the rows of corn, a fleshy white person running through them. Whatever the stalking mass in the corn was, it didn't like the road, and the fire devoured the entire field until the fire department finally showed up and put it out. We told the cops everything. But they said we were probably just attacked by a large rodent, and that us being drunk gave us the illusion and the ideas about this animal being human-like. Two of my buddies had to be put on antibiotics because the scratches became so infected, and our parents ended up having to pay the farmer a handsome amount of money for the property damage that we caused. And I still don't know what it was that was attacking us that night. But I'm under the belief that there is either one or more feral humans that live amongst the corner fields of Iowa and have the ability to drive the truck, and it looked too human to be anything else.